I'm Allison, and I'm a member of the Mozart Mission. We are a group of individuals who've been directly affected by breast cancer in Grand Prairie and the Peace region here. Having the Mozart machine here in our Grand Prairie Hospital will decrease surgery time. It will reduce the need for reoccurring surgeries and also it will give confidence to the patients knowing that all of the cancer has been removed the first time. It was 2019, uh, a mammogram showed two tumors in my left breast. Um, it was a very emotional time. I'm a widow and I have two younger daughters. So the first thing that crossed my mind was, I'm gonna die, my girls are gonna be orphans. You know, it just fear. But we went on to see the doctor, um, decided to do a lumpectomy. So did that surgery, uh, went home and thought it was over. That was it, it wasn't too bad. Uh, and then I got the call that the margins were still positive. So that meant another surgery. This time a mastectomy taking the whole breast. And this is all during COVID. So no family, no friends in surgery, uh, just by myself in the hospital. So it was pretty tough. You don't always have to have symptoms and it doesn't have to run in your family. Uh, it does not run in my family and I was not sick. I wasn't sick in any way. So many emotions come at you that you really don't know how to process any of them. Uh, it's just like a whole wall. And for a long time, I didn't deal with any of them. I just, I, I couldn't, I didn't know how. Then I found our Facebook group and these women are amazing. They help you step by step, you know, and, and let you know that what you're feeling is 100% real. And it's, it's not judgy. You know, if you need to cry, cry. If you need to yell, yell, but you can't stay there. You know, one step at a time, just breathe deep and go. It was harder for me to watch my family as I went through it than it probably was for me to go through it. I just went in to be open to all experiences. I was like, this is another experience in my life. I can't control it. I can't change what's happening to me. It is what it is. And so I need to be positive for my children. That was my hardest thing, was having to tell my three kids that I had cancer. And I would um, have to be going through these treatments and seeing um, their emotions. And just, I felt so bad for them because it was hurting them so much. I've always been very positive in my life. I've always done what I wanted to do um, and live life to the fullest. I've always cherished it and been very grateful to be alive. So it was just difficult to see them struggle through it. When I got home and I took the gauze off and seeing um, the scar and just the disfigurement of my breast was so hard. I can't imagine having to go back again and again to have that. It took, it, it, it took probably a good two minutes before I could look at it and just accept that that had happened. Emotionally, it is a wild ride. <laughs> it kind of got to buckle up. It, um, of course, it's overwhelming and there's so much information coming at you at once. Not only do you, do you worry about yourself, but then, you know, you worry about your husband and how he's going to handle it and, and cope with it, your children. And fortunately, um, my children really didn't have any point of reference. So, so when I said, you know, when I told them, we, we told them right away and we were pretty upfront. Uh, it had to be more of the physical things that they could expect, you know, like it really focused like, Mom has cancer, um, her hair is going to fall out and she's going to be really tired. And just being hyper aware of what point of references they see in society and how they interpret that with their mom. And, and you know, a memory that comes up is, is uh, right now it is actually the Terry Fox run is going to happen right away. So that was really, my kids know, okay, mom has cancer. And then they hear about Terry Fox in school. And so they came home and it was like, hey, mom, we're learning about Terry Fox. He had cancer. And I'm like, yeah, 
And then they go, and then his cancer came back and he died. And you're like, okay, back it up and, and, and trying to uh, get ahead of those things while still taking care of yourself. And so yeah, there was, it's obviously a really scary time. And just uh, not only uh, fighting your own uncertainty and your own mental spirals and, and uh, things like that with yourself, but everyone around you as well especially as a woman and, and um, having a family as well. For somebody who, who is just starting their journey with breast cancer, my, my best advice is you can only take it a day at a time. Um, different treatments uh, or different paths can be a bit of a marathon and you can't look at the whole staircase, you just have to take every stair at a time and not to get caught up in the big picture in those cases because you can only deal with what's immediately next. Find something every day to be grateful for, no matter how big or small it is. Like, I'm grateful that today I got up and I was able to shower. That's a win. Every day, no matter if it's good or bad, you can't change what's happening. It's just how you react to what's happening to you. And life is beautiful and it's great. And you're gonna meet so many incredible people on your journey that you'll wonder how you ever lived life without them. I think the positive thing about the whole cancer journey was the power of support that you get. Your friends and family come together, your social media support groups, the women that have been fundraising for this machine. It's, it's just a very powerful thing. I have met some incredible women, by far the strongest women. I wouldn't even have imagined that people could be so strong and so brave and so courageous and helpful and loving and, you know, just wanting to pay it forward. We joke that we're kind of a ragtag group of um, ladies that otherwise our lives would not have crossed paths. And I've made some really great friendships. And um, also just to have the confidence that you are stronger than you think you are. Um, coming out of something like that has really um, enforced in me that we can do hard things. It made me appreciate sometimes it's just those really small things that it was a good reminder for me to be like, oh, and other people are going through bad things, not to uh, hold back and wait for that grandiose way to support them. Even the small things, even checking in, how are you doing, things like that has just been so amazing. And, and with the whole treatment, I was incredibly supported and really just uh, really fortunate in all the different ways people rallied behind me. You learn really quickly that hurry up and wait is a big part of the process. But if we had that machine, it, would have, we, it could have been eliminated right then and there in the surgery room. They can just tell if they have it all and you're good to go. Having the Mozart machine there in the surgical suite would have saved me from four additional surgeries, um, four additional spots that I took away from somebody else's loved one that who needed surgery, four times that I needed to tell my kids that I would be okay. I want the women that are following behind me in this journey, I want it to be easier for them, not so tough. We need to help the people coming behind us. And if it could be us again, we could be back on that table. We could be having it in the other breast. We could be having it in the same breast. We could be, you just don't know. So anything I can do to help myself and help others, I believe is so important. It's so important to help and to get this technology here to help the peace country and the support we've received from our community, the outlying communities is, it just brings us to tears. It's just so overwhelming that so many people are supportive and feel so passionately about it and are helping us. It's, it's a wonderful feeling and it's wonderful to be part of it. I don't think it should make a difference of where you're getting your, your uh, treatment. It should be the same level. So uh, whether you're going to Edmonton or Calgary or Grand Prairie, I'm born and raised in Grand Prairie and I don't want uh, people in our community to have that disadvantage of not getting um, maybe the best uh, resources that are available to, to make their treatment as smooth and as, as uh, positive and as effective as possible. With being a resident of Grand Prairie all my life, I know this is going to affect people I know directly. It's going to affect, one of my friends will be in this machine, one of my family members will be. So when you 
bring it down to a level that's so personal, you realize how important it is. So, <laughs> Mike, jeez.